Hi there, and welcome to the ATS podcast with me, Will Brown, and John Soulsby, where we break down chunks of health and fitness information into bite-sized pieces, remove a bunch of the noise, and just leave what's relevant. Uh, today we are talking about cold exposure and its impacts on health and fitness. You get cold. Yep, pretty much. Part one of cold exposure. Yeah, if it's your first time in the cold tub, you get cold. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I suppose this. Is, I feel this has gained a lot more traction recently. Again, I don't like know social I, media and stuff. I don't know. I mean, I kind of know why it's all this stupid, like fucking Sigma grind set, bro. It, it is. Um, but um, this has been about for a very long time. Yes, as 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 has why it's a bad idea if you want to. I say a bad idea. It's like a neutral to slightly bad idea if you care about getting stronger or more jacked. Yeah, yeah. I suppose like you can come at this from a couple of angles. Um, I definitely think it has potential benefits. Um, I have done it before, as in Cold War exposure. Mm-hmm. Um, but. It's not as hyped up. It's not going to suddenly make you some <clears throat> Sigma male that's going to rule the world. Yeah. Just, um, so I suppose I think the, the benefits from my point of view are traditionally in um, sport where I would say you're not worried about increasing your performance for tomorrow or the next day. You're worried about being formed. So yeah. What I mean by that is like you're already at your peak performance level, and let's say you've just like had a game and you've got practice in two days' time and then a game at the end of next week. All you want to do is recover as quickly as possible, not feel, feel like better shit. as quick, <laughs> not feel like shit as quickly yeah. as possible, so that you can perform again. Then it has a place. Or if you're in like training camp or preseason and you're like. I've had two practices today. I've fucked, I've got two tomorrow, two the next day. <laughs> and yeah. I feel like ass. You're like, this is where cold water, cold water immersion is kind of what's referred to in a lot of um, studies. Um, that's where this can really help because there is some evidence out there that it can reduce your um, general feelings of fatigue and your muscle. Yeah, it's an uh, acute, and and that's kind of why it's detrimental to training. Yeah, in, in in that kind of muscle soreness and inflammation is part of the recovery and therefore adaptation process of training. Like, I feel like a lot there's some people that try to minimize muscle soreness. If if you similar things happen with NSAIDs and things as well. Like if you if you take yes. regular and chronic NSAIDs to reduce muscular soreness. The muscular, like the adaptation of that training that's caused the soreness, will be lessened or dampened because you're reducing the soreness. Like the soreness is not a hundred percent, but is relevant to the magnitude of adaptation to the training stimulus. But yeah. as as you alluded to, and again, this is exactly where I've done it. Is like when we were playing American football. If you're at training camp and you have two practices a day plus walkthroughs, and then you've got the same again next day and the same again the next day. You're like it feels like someone has rubbed deep deep heat on my skeleton, yeah. like yeah. the inside f- of me feels like there's napalm in it. Like I need to make that go away. You can just get in a cold tub, and the the key thing will be it will feel a lot better than being out of the cold tub. <laughs> like if you get yeah. in one and you're like, oh my god, this feels better. That's usually a sign that the acute fatigue is quite high, um, and, and you're yeah, likely that's... to improve. <laughs> That's what it's useful for when you're like in that those scenarios, you're not wanting your physical attributes to improve. Like you're not wanting to become faster more. You're not wanting to become like stronger. What you're wanting to do is be able to play your sport again twice tomorrow. Yeah. There's a ten improve. Yeah. Especially like there's a loads of examples of that for like game day based um like recovery interventions like unsurprisingly standard rehab for a broken finger isn't just tape it to the next one but if you're in the middle of a game and have a broken finger and you want to keep playing because you're relevant to the team's victory you just tape it to the next one yeah it's not exactly the most in-depth physio but like like it's that kind of if you're looking to keep playing or that you're incentivized to keep playing and you just strap it up 
that's how it goes. That's not exactly. There's that story of that NFL lineman who got the doctor to fucking amputate his finger. I mean, that's savage, but yeah. I, I'm pretty sure it's like, oh, I'm going to plug on now, but it, it's in like a playoff game or something like that. And he can't like get it back. That's mental. If true, I had not heard that. The um, There's some stuff about reduced anxiety. <clears throat> I've seen those. I, again, it, it would be remiss if you missed out the idea that like acute sensory overload kind of reduces anxiety in all aspects like another example of this if you want to try at home that's very easy is if you find uh like toxic warheads those like brutally sour sweets that are like horrendous like they're so uncomfy to eat if you are in a period where you are experiencing some kind of anxiety spiral just pop one of them in and you'll soon forget about it because you will be overwhelmed by horrific bitterness <laughs> like your face will screw up and you will mostly just be focused on how disgusting the sweetie is uh, assuming you again please check the labels don't uh, just go eating stuff you can't be eating uh which again is like a another example of this kind of acute sensory overload like overwriting anxiety because you're just focused on that. Like <clears throat> it's the same with people who exercise loads or people who like Ugh, again, I hate the phrase like, oh the jib is my therapy, bro. Like no, therapy is therapy. That's like a qualified mental health professional, yeah, tubes. Like the gym is just exercise. But the the classic meme of like, go to the gym to to replace my mental pain with physical pain. Yes. <laughs> a very crude example, but the same thing. Um, something that nobody really talks about because it's not very sexy. Uh, ice baths may actually trigger uh, cardiac uh, issues in people with poor cardiac health. So, uh, yeah, don't go triggering dangerous cardi cardiac events uh, if people have pre-existing predispositions for, like, you know, heart attacks, infarctions, like those kinds of things. Please don't, because... It might be cool and be like, oh yeah, we're doing it together as pals or as a family until somebody takes a heart attack in the cold lake. Yeah. Also, quite a lot of the literature refers to cold water swimming as well, which, again, you kind of get the, co -con the, the conflating benefits of like, is that just exercise? Don't really know. Because you're like, yes, it's cold, but also it's exercise. So you're like, the results could conflate or confound it. The um, but yeah, you definitely will get cold. Uh, but you know, don't do it if you have a, if your family has a history of heart conditions because that might be bad, especially if you're approaching your kind of middle age, which seems to be everyone doing this, because <coughs> they're the people that can afford those like Cryo funky, chamber. funky, yeah, those funky like blow up things they sit in their back garden and fill with water and then let freeze. Um, so I found the football thing. Oh yeah. So it was Ronnie Lott, an ex like safety. And he crushed his finger in a tackle in the last game of the season in the playoffs run in the corner. And the doctors essentially were like, Well, we can put a pin in it, it'll take two months to heal. And then they essentially jokingly said you could amputate your pinky. So you got his pinky amputated. Fucking bad man. Nice. What an absolute and rash. apparently um Marcus Davenport, who currently plays for the Saints, has done the same thing. Or similar. It was in a mini camp, like before twenty twenty two. That's nuts. And um, he's had he had like an infection in it for ages, and he was having to deal with it for however long. So he just got the end of his pinky chopped off. Fair. Yeah. I mean, when you're being paid millions and millions to play, uh, you're yeah. like, yeah, right. I don't need that. Yeah, yeah fair. You can always get get a wee graft with all the NFL money if you're sensible with it. Yeah. Apparently, Ronnie Lott has uh, since regretted. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man, I can't see why that is. <laughs> like big J Jason Pierre-Paul holding on to say... shitty, shitty fireworks and blowing his J own hand up. 
GPPs were slightly different. They did a slightly different type of amputation, but yes. Oh, mate, it's not like he was on rookie money okay. either. Like, dude's literally on star player money, and he's buying knockoff fireworks. Like, come on. <laughs> and then holding them in his own hand. Pay someone to do that. Yeah, just pay someone. Just give one of your uncles, like, a tenner to do it or something. Like, or a hundred bucks. Like, that's nothing to you. Or a grand. Or, you know, uh, or, stick you know, it in a ground. <laughs> ground gonna say, like you're normally like going to normal... do. He still played for plenty of years after that as well. Yeah. Again, if you ever wanted an idea of how much genetics play into athleticism, there's literally, like, a dude in the NFL with one hand. <laughs> I mean, it, he was in the right position for it, but... Hey, know. man, it's, yeah, it's, it's, like, you need them hands to, like, swat o line hands. There was that dude who yeah. was playing linebacker... Oh, no, he got a club, though. Who, that's, it's true, yeah. <laughs> was not that dude who was playing linebacker who literally had one hand? Like, he literally had, like, a birth defect or I something. I think so, Whereas... yeah. There's know. also loads of NFL boys who like break their arms. And they just get it like cast up to their nines, and they said you end up with a club around their arm. You're like, I, don't, I think I'd rather have hands. Yeah. Anyway, that's a we. Yeah, some tangential, some tangential NFL news, but the uh, yeah, cold uh, cold water exposure will save you acutely in the depths of in-season training, or sorry, in in-season game-to-game training, and maybe in training camp when things are really grim. Yeah. But in the long run, not great. If you're looking to get as jacked and as strong as possible, also not great. Um, if you have a family history or a pre-existing predisposition to cardiac dangerous cardiac incidents, uh, don't do that either. Uh, and, you know, uh, if you are going cold water swimming, like out in the lake and everything else, always use a spotter. Don't go swimming alone. Bring a buddy. Uh because you never know when that cold hits you and you suddenly like reflexively intake air if you also decide to intake water and then begin to aspirate in the middle of a lock then you're probably gonna have a bad time <clears throat> um, but yeah I wouldn't really be uh, I'm like yeah it definitely will increase anxiety but not because it's unique because it's cold water it's just because it's literally so uncomfortable in the in the acute like the now it just overrides all like you can't really worry about i don't fucking know whatever you worry about if you're freezing your balls off <laughs> so yeah feel free to do it but you know don't think you're better than everyone else because you know you're just colder than everyone else <laughs> exactly. see, you see you next time <laughs>